Thank you all for joining us today at the Iowa City Public Library for our Zoom with our very special guest. I'd like to introduce you to Amanda Jorgensen, who is Zooming in from Seattle, Washington with us today. So we were talking a little bit before. I said it was kind of cooler here today. How is the weather in Seattle? <laughs> oh, we are getting up to about, we'll be up to 80 degrees today, which is a lot cooler than it was yesterday. But it was 90 yesterday, which is very hot for Seattle because we're right on the water. Yeah. The weather we were having last week. So um, you can keep the hot weather. We kind of like the cool weather. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Amanda does drawing full time. Um, um, so we are going to learn from one of the best today. So um, if you can give her your full attention, if you have questions, you can put them into the chat or if it is a time that it's, and if it's okay with Amanda, you can um, buzz in or raise your hand with a little emoji um, or just kind of um, put in there. Maria says she's all set. I'll kind of watch the chat for you too, Amanda. And um, if there's anything, I can always um, kind of sneak in questions here and there. So we do have two different ways. You'll see Amanda on Spotlight. And then when she's drawing, you'll be able to see um, the drawing up close. So we're um, going to go that way. So without further ado, here is Amanda. Thank you guys again for joining us. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. It's really cool to see how many of you are joining me today and learning how to draw or learning new tips on how to draw a red-tailed hawk. Um, as Angie mentioned, I live in Seattle, Washington, and I am a full-time natural science illustrator and artist. Does anyone know what natural science illustrators do by chance? Draw nature. Yep, we draw nature. I work together sometimes with biologists and scientists and uh, kind of bring together the, what they saw out in wildlife and draw it for them so they can publish them into articles and books. But otherwise, I really like to draw animals all together. Um, I wanted to share some examples so you kind of see what I do if you were interested before we get started here. Um, hopefully you can see my screen. Whoops. And you can tell that I am great at technology too. So I really like to draw birds. So this is a great horned owl. I also really like to make super colorful pieces that talk about animals in their nature. So here are some ducks that you see in the oceans here in the Pacific with all the food that they like to eat. So I like to make stories out of art. And then I do some other things that are kind of more, I don't know, not as realistic as the others. So I really enjoy just about anything pertaining to our natural world. So if you have any questions about just art or what I do, I'm happy to answer those questions. But if you're ready to get started about talking about hawks, let's go. Any preemptive or any questions already? Maria, you already have a question? I see your hand up. Um, it's not about the animals part. It's about the drawing part. How come whenever I imagine what something that I'll draw, it, the drawing turns out a lot worse than I thought it would? It, so that is a great question. And I'm sure you're not the only one that feels this way. So we all kind of have an image in our head on how something should look, right? We're looking at something and you're like, if I draw that, it should look exactly like what I'm seeing. Sometimes it looks all wonky and funny. And it's because we just need to sit and practice. I know that doesn't but sound great. Practice. I, I draw I, a lot of Avengers things because I really like the Avengers. <laughs> um, well. Like, seriously, they're like the, pretty much the only thing I draw. Well, this will maybe get you into drawing and practicing a little bit more with nature stuff. It's kind of fun. I like doing nature sketching because it gets you outside and makes you observe things a little bit closer. Because to get something exactly right, like a hawk or even a flower, you have to sit and observe it for a while. So patience is king. I know it kind of sounds boring. How many of you have seen a red-tailed hawk 
in real life? I don't even know what it is. A red tail hawk. They, I'm sure you know what a hawk looks like, though. Any type of hawk. Guy. Okay. Seems like a lot of you have seen some hawks. So for those of you who go on drives or have to drive somewhere and look around in open fields, there are usually some sort of birds perched on a fence or a telephone pole or something like that. Have you seen a big bird that is just hanging out? It's usually a red-tailed hawk because they're the most popular hawk or the most populous hawk in the, in the Northwest or excuse me, I keep forgetting where I am, in North America. So they're pretty rad. They have about a four foot wingspan, which is maybe taller than some of you. And it's more than half of my height. Um, and they can stay in the air, just circling in the air for hours on, on end. And they can sit and just watch their prey for hours and hours. So if you're gonna observe any type of animal in the wild, the hawk is a really good one to watch because they don't move very much until they see something. Um, they are kind of important to all of us, especially in Iowa with your crops. Um, does anyone know why? Any ideas why hawks, especially red tail hawks might be important? Maria, what do you think? Uh, because they carry seeds. That, that they can Catching pollinate. the mice? Yeah, uh, Jayla, I saw your hand up there for a second. Here are some of the birds away, reading the crops. Yep, takes away a little. Malcolm, I see your hand up. Um, they eat um, rabbits and rodents. Like yeah, mice. so that's a big one. They eat all the little mice and rabbits and all the things that like to eat the especially the corn crops like grasshoppers too they take they help us out a lot also their nests help create new habitats for little birds so they're really really important for our ecosystem but anyhow that's a little bit about red tail hawks before we get started for those of you who've not seen a red tail hawk i'm gonna go ahead and show you what our Oh, sorry. We have someone in the chat that says they have a red tail, a red tail hawk nest in their tree by their house. <gasps> You're so lucky. How are you so lucky? Oh, that's so cool. I'm envious. Living in a city, sometimes you don't get to see those things all that much. But here on my screen, you'll see a picture of a red tailed hawk. So red tailed hawks, they kind of match their name. Um, you'll see that their tails are more of a brownish red than a red. They've got brown throughout and they've got a white underbelly and yellow feet. So those are the main characteristics of a uh, hawk in general, but especially the red-tailed hawk. Now seeing a photo of them, have you all seen, maybe seen one before as far as you know? <laughs> it's all right if not. All right. So uh, chat, there's a question from, um, from Grace and Benaya. They said, how do you draw it if it doesn't stay still? That is a really good question. So <sighs> yes, that is a very good question. So what I like to do when I'm out nature sketching is when I see an animal that is really interesting that I want to get down is first I just look at it. I look and see what its unique features are. What makes that animal that animal? So for example, with a red-tailed hawk, I'm going to note that it has a yellow beak, a yellow eye, long red tail feathers, and a brown body. And then I'm going to note the basic shape. So I'm not gonna necessarily, if I have time to draw it really fast, that's great. But what I'm gonna do is just note what makes that animal an animal. So I'm just gonna write down those facts and draw a basic shape. And I'll, I'll be teaching you how to do that here in just a second. So yeah, nature sketching, it does take a little bit of patience and time, but you'll get used to it. So it's really just about looking first and then drawing later. So just making sure that you know what the animal really looks like. All right, so we're gonna first, any other questions before we move on? All right, so what we're gonna do first 
is a kind of a silly activity. I'm going to put up the picture of the red tail hawk again. And what we're going to do is called a blind contour drawing. Blind contour drawing is where you look at the image on the screen and only that while drawing on your piece of paper. Why would we do such a thing, you ask? Well, let me show you this as an example. So here's my paper and I'm looking at my image of the red-tailed hawk and I'll put it up in just a second. I just wanna show you. We're doing this because, and as Maria maybe mentioned previously, it's like, why do things look the way they do in my head but not on the piece of paper? This way you can kind of loosen up your drawing skill and think about the basic shapes of the animal instead of like all the feathers and all the colors and whatnot. So what I'm going to do, and I'll show you here while looking at my picture from afar, now I'm looking directly at the picture and I'm just going to play with the shape of the animal. And sometimes they look really crazy and that's kind of the fun thing about it is it kind of makes you laugh and then we can move on to the more serious art. So that's kind of where I am with that. So I want you to try doing that first with our picture. Try looking at your picture or try looking at the picture and not at your piece of paper and draw the outline of your animal to see what the shape of the animal is. It's really a weird exercise, but sometimes it'll help you just Think about shapes instead of all the little details that you see in the animal. Let me see. I think I'm still pinned. There we go. You see the, you see the picture, right? All right. Just take a couple minutes. It should just go really quickly. I'd be curious to see them once we're done. I'm sure they'll look excellent. <laughs> that looks great, Angie. Look at, I love its leg and its foot. That's really great. <laughs> Anyone already finished theirs? Likes how they look and I can, I can spot. Let me see, let me spotlight. Um, Alice, maybe. <laughs> That's excellent. I love it. I love it. Um, you guys did a great job. They all look like hawks to me. See how uh, when you're not thinking too hard about something, it ends up working out, right? Look at this. Aaron and Philip, did, uh, you guys did a great job. Grace and Benaya, excellent work, everybody. Cool. Pizza Dev, you guys did a great job. Oops. All right, everybody. So now that we kind of loosened up a little, right? I want you to start thinking about the shapes you just drew. And I'm gonna show you on a printout I have of our picture. Let me see. So when you're looking at an animal, initially it's kind of hard to think about it in different shapes. But once I point this out to you, maybe it will look a little clearer. Here we have a long flat oval for the head. Then we've got another oval for the body that's a little bit different. Then we've got another long oval for the wing a rectangle for the tail and kind of a rectangle with a triangle for the beak. So it's interesting when you start breaking down animals that way because it helps the, oh, of course I forgot the foot. The foot's here, it's kind of a long. I always forget about the feet, everybody. They're easily forgotten and they're helpful, but you know birds. Anyway, so when you start thinking about an animal that way, it kind of helps you figure out where to put things and what kind of shape they need to be in order to make it look like that animal. 
So what we're gonna do is break it down like that in our sketchbook. So what, are you ready for this? So the first thing we're gonna do is the body shape. And this one's important because all the other parts will sit on top of it or be connected to it. So if you are ready, we're gonna start by drawing kind of a sideways oval. And it's okay if it's not how you want it to be. My favorite animal to draw, that is a really good question. My birds, any type of bird, I love drawing birds. They are owls mostly. I think they're very cool. <laughs> so this is how we, we're gonna start our hawk. We've got this oval, all right? According to what I showed you, what do we need next? We need this flat boy on top, right? So this will be the shape of the head. So we're going to put it right at the tip of the oval. And the funny thing about hawks and most birds of prey, so anybody who eats rodents or snakes or whatever, is that their head is so much smaller than the rest of their body. They've got like a little pea head compared to uh, other birds. So if you like see a chickadee or a cardinal, their heads are most of the time bigger than their bodies, but with birds of prey, their heads are a lot smaller. All right, so now we've got our head shape. Next, we're going to go ahead and put in our wing. And some of you might be saying, how the heck is this gonna turn into a hawk? This is where the patience comes in. I did not start out drawing very well. It's all about practice and being nice to yourself. We all get there in different ways. So here we've got our kind of long and pointy oval. How's it going so far? Doing all right? All right, I like the thumbs up. Excellent work, nice. <laughs> Mine looks like a pizza. It's, <laughs> that seems to be a theme with your household. <laughs> Mine looks like a sad penguin right now. So it's okay. With an olive. Oh, you're funny. <laughs> it's okay. We'll get there. I promise. So now we've got our wing in. What we're going to do next is we're going to put in our tail, and this is kind of a different rectangle shape. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right, everybody. If yours looks like a pizza, it's not supposed to be perfect yet, I promise. It's just the beginning stages. That's why we practice. So here I put in a, a rectangle that attaches to the body and goes up underneath your wing shape. You know what? If your head is looking incorrect, it, it, according to you, and I'm sure it is actually fine, feel free to erase. This is the practice sketch. So feel free to work on it all you want. It's no big deal. We'll get there when we get there and I can do this as many times as you need assistance. Next, we're gonna do the beak. So the beak is interesting. I think my head's honestly a little long too, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do is draw a line into your head oval and outward. Then you're going to draw one right underneath with some space to meet where the other one is. So they're parallel to each other. Then we're going to make that really excellent and scary hook. A skinny turkey, perfect. That, you know what? There's a video of a hawk that I wanna show you and he kind of looks like a skinny turkey, I'll tell you that much. 
<laughs> be nice to yourselves, everybody. There's no reason why you should be an expert at drawing a hawk with the first time by doing this method. So for those of you who are here, just draw a little hook shape between those two lines for the beak. The eye goes on the top of the top line. And it's a circle. Hawks aren't, they are, they are crazy looking. Look at him. He looks like a cranky little buddy. They're cranky looking. If you already want to make him look more hawk-like, you can draw in the eyebrow of him looking a little angry. Now we've got our basic shapes. What we're going to do next is start drawing in our connecting feathers. Got the foot. Oh, see, I told you I always forget the feet. <laughs> So we've got our foot here and they've got really long talons and they've got really long toes. So we will go ahead and do kind of like a curved rectangle shape with a long, you can just do a long curved toenail, talon really, not a toenail. Thank you for the reminder. I appreciate that. For whatever reason, I always forget about the feet. <laughs> a hawk can't be footless. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it would be a little silly, wouldn't it? All right. So now that we've got, well, you can also draw a little perch there too, if that makes more sense for y'all. But what we're going to do next is bring in the feathers, the connecting feathers. So we kind of want to start getting a smooth shape, connecting all those parts together. So I'm going to do some line drawing like this to connect it. And we'll be erasing. Do we want our line to be um, like really straight or do we want it to be kind of squiggly? You kind of, so it's a good, good, good question. So what you'll want is to make it kind of look feather like. So it's the lines I like to do are like this. So it kind of gives an indication of feathers but it, this is your piece of art. It's up to you, really. Sorry, I hit mute. What's up? Tom? So once you start connecting those lines together, you can start erasing some of these shapes. So it starts to look a little less like ovals on top of ovals. As you can see, our hawk friend has some long feathers down here, and those are the flight feathers. So we'll start drawing those in a little bit. I love fat animals are the best kind of animals, so no judgment on having a <laughs> Maybe he had a lot of rats for dinner, and good for him. He's helping out the, uh, the environment. If you are ready, you can start putting in these long flight feathers by just doing basic lines downward. Hey, if your hawk looks like a hawk, I think we're getting places. So I, uh, I'm really excited to see these. What you also have are these other layers of feathers on top, so you can feel free to add those too. So they kind of go like this. So if you want to draw lines like that. So 
for the tail, you can see in the picture, it's got a couple layers of feathers here. So an easy way to do that is just by going like, just drawing lines in that too. And it kind of gives an indication or it shows you that there are multiple feathers there. Fluffy, I'm excited to see all your fluffy birds. And remember, this is just the sketch, you know, it's not your final product yet. So mine kind of looks, I'm just gonna add some things to them um, to bring out the fact that, it, <laughs> that it's a bird. <laughs> All right. So those are the basic shapes that you want to use when you're drawing a hawk. Has anyone finished theirs and wants to show it off? I'd be curious to see it. Or if they, if you have any questions or need um, me to go back over anything. Ooh, I'm gonna, I, was, I like this one. Look at his sassy little face. I love him. Nice work. The sample sketch, yeah, let me, I'll spotlight my video again. And I'm gonna go through, these look great, everybody. Eleanor and Naomi, that looks great. Eli, and oh, wow, y'all did a great job so far. I hope you're very proud of yourself. Henry, I, I like yours too. I don't see the pizza. It doesn't look like a pizza to me. I think you're being a little hard on yourselves. Nice work, everybody. All right, did we have any questions at the minute? <laughs> I haven't seen any other questions. Someone earlier asked if you have illustrated any books. I haven't illustrated any books yet. Not yet, hopefully someday. Thanks for asking. All right, Theo, I like your glasses. They're pretty cool. <laughs> All righty, how is everyone feeling? Any questions to the sketch? See, it's not as it's not as awful once you get to it, right? Pretty basic shapes. They start to make sense a little bit. So, for those of you feeling ready, what we're going to move on to now is your final piece of art. And your final piece of art is a sketch that you feel like you want to <laughs> freezing to death in the summer trade i'll trade you too hot i grew up in alaska this is awful I, anything above 70 is terrible <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> um so for those of you ready to move on feel free to if you feel confident with the sketch that you just did feel free to color those in and I will be showing you some tips if you'd like so the main characteristics of a hawk a red tailed hawk. Are you've got a brown body. You've got a white underbelly. You've got so they're interesting because the yellow eye will change the older they get Finn that's excellent, thank you for sharing. Oh, he's got, he's got a rat. That's really cool. <laughs> um, the eye will change colors as they get older. So the younger the hawk, the more yellow their eye will be. The older the hawk, they'll turn more brown. So if you ever get a chance to see them close up, take a look at their eye. So white underbelly, brown on top, and then yellow eyes and yellow feet, and then a reddish brown tail. So if you would like to practice your sketch again, I'm happy to walk you through it. If you feel like you've done an excellent job, which it looks like you have, let's get coloring. Totally up to you. And feel free to ask me any questions while we do so. The best tip I have for if you are doing white spaces, kind of like for our, our hawk, and I can also put, put the image back up, um, is to leave your paper white. 
where it needs to be white because sometimes the white colored pencil doesn't work the way it should. Ooh, a Santa bird. What's a Santa bird? <laughs> Let's see if I can find you so you can show me what a Santa bird looks like. I'm gonna spotlight you for a second so I can see it. <laughs> I love it. Santa birds are excellent. You can do whatever you'd like with your Santa bird. For those of you who are super advanced, you can also add in a background kind of what I did for my original piece too. I just add a little, little bit of grass and colored in the, the post that it's on. Would you like me to put up the picture of the hawk again, or would you like to see how I color in my piece? What would be preferable? Color, okay. So I'll have them here too. So I, when I'm working in colored pencil, I like to do a layer of the where you of the most of that one color. So for you've got several, it looks like several brown um, color pencils. So I'm going to color in mostly brown first, and then I'm going to add details or more or different shades of brown later. So I like to do that. Maria, did you have? Is that Maria? Who? Yeah. Did you have a question? Yeah. Uh, which oh, color do? Which shade of uh, brown do I use first? Like that is a great I, question. I have light brown, brown, dark brown, and mahogany. So what I like to do is I like to start with um, the darkest and, sh and color it in lightly. So dark and then brown. Use the dark brown, and then what we'll do, or what we can do, if if. Um, if other people have different color browns too, is that I can show you how to use more brown on top of that to make it look more realistic. Yeah, shading is fun, I agree. For those of you who don't have multiple browns, that is okay. What you can do is use your brown colored pencil and then use yellow or red on top of it. And it kind of makes it look like it's shiny and full of feathers. Coloring itself is really calming, I think. It's very nice and fun. And remember, feel free to ask questions. If you have questions about what we did previously, that's okay too. We all we all move in different speeds. So for those of you who have watched movies that have eagles in them, bald eagles, you, you know what it sounds like, right? Do you know what sound they actually use for bald eagles in movies? They use a red tail hawk. Really? Yes. So while you're coloring, and I'll, I'll, I wanted to share this with you because it's really kind of funny. So here is an example of what a bald eagle actually sounds like. Hopefully you can hear this. Not very majestic. No, they sound super dorky and I love it. <laughs> so that's an eagle. So they sound like a little tiny innocent baby bird. <laughs> <laughs> it does kind of, huh? But this is what they actually use in movies. That's a red tail hawk. <laughs> so they replace so that it sounds okay, like that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah, so hawks never underestimate a hawk, that's for sure. 
Sounds like the Eagles in Lords of the Rings and Hobbit. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oops, I think I left my uh, my eagle on. So anyway, for those of you who uh, who now can share that little tidbit, uh, you hear the hawk sound in your backyard. Woo! That would be that would be a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> uh, all right. So for those of you who have multiple colors, I'll show you. Uh, what I'll do. So I've done a little bit of brown in mine. And what I'm going to do is add some red. So I'm going to use my red colored pencil. Kind of start coloring that in on top of the brown so that it just kind of looks like a richer, more vibrant brown color. And it kind of fills in the white spaces that your your brown colored pencil wants to find. Question. Yes. Um, you should you draw really lightly when you um, are starting your sketch. That's a great question. I would say, I would say yes just because sometimes the pencil gets to be hard to erase. Um, but it's okay too if you're sketching and you're just trying to get the basic shapes of the bird and the unique features down because all you're trying to do is get in those, what makes that animal unique. But if it's like your final piece of art, then I would do it lightly just so it's easier to erase a little. How's everyone doing? Good. And you can, of course, add a little bit of yellow to it, too. When I'm drawing a piece of art and I want to paint it later, I usually will do a color study, kind of like what I did with this, my original piece that I did here. I usually like to draw it out and then color it in with colored pencils so I have an idea of what kind of paint I wanna, what color paint I wanna use. This is really helpful if later you feel like you wanna color it in with, uh, or color it in with acrylic paint, tempera paint, watercolor. Kind of gives you a better idea of what to use, what colors to use when you are trying to go for your final piece of artwork. Henry, I'm starting to get the feeling that you really like pizza. <laughs> You're done, Eli. Let's let's see. I'm gonna unspotlight me for a second. And I would love to see if those of you. Oh wow! Hold on. I'm gonna spotlight some of these coming through. Look at that fence. That's excellent work. Nice work. That it, you would know that that is a hawk. Well done. Thank you for sharing. Let's see. Who else we got going on here? We've got. Ooh, that is an excellent, excellent graphite sketch, pencil sketch that looks beautiful. You've got the wings in there, the feathers in there. Nice work. Let's see, who else? Ooh, Katie, let's see yours. Oh, wow. I at least did it on a barrel. I love it. Those are excellent. You've got the colors in, you've got... <coughs> Nice. Thank you for sharing. And let's see, I saw some other people. Oh, Theo, let's see yours. Well, you even did a background. Nice work. Your shades are still cool. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. 
These are really great, y'all. Rowan and Carver, let's see. Ooh, I like that guy. He's fun. Oh, look at your background, too. Excellent work. Thanks for sharing. Let's see. P Mr. Pizza himself. Where did you go? <laughs> Let's spotlight this guy. Look at him! I like it. It's excellent. Thank you for sharing. And then I saw Eli. Eli, let's see yours. I love it. Look at him. Very proud sitting on his perch, waiting for it for the next rodent to run by. Finn, let's see yours. I I love that you did the, the rat or the mouse in its mouth. That's really fun. Excellent. Thank you. Anyone else feeling like sharing? Did I not see anybody? Maria, you have your hand up? Uh, uh, mine still isn't done because I'm waiting to see yours again. But so this is the, the, the thing that I'm using for my colored pencils. Uh huh. So so the bits of lead from the gold colored pencil and the dark brown colored pencil. The dark brown looks like black. So now it's like the Hawkeye colors with the with the leads in there. <laughs> I'll take the shavings out so you can see better. Excellent. I don't, I, you, y'all can teach me all about the Hawkeye stuff if you want. <laughs> I don't know much. Excellent. <laughs> like Hawkeye in there. Nice. Oh, let's see, Angie. Let's, I'm going to spotlight you. Look at him. He's so cute. <laughs> Not a stick figure. <laughs> it's not. See, basic shapes. <laughs> I've seen all my, all of it, and I added a little. I also added a little more. Let's see. Oh look, I like it. I'm not I, okay. thinking where all the rock go. I really like. And that. there's also one right there. In the Look at that. I like how you all made it your own, too. <laughs> Uh-oh, watch out, little buddy. <laughs> okay, waiting to see how I continue coloring. Sorry. Spotlighting. So... I really like to use multiple colors to get, to get there because no animal is just one color, right? They're different hues, they're different shades. Even crows are like all black birds are not just black. They've got blue, they've got purple in them, et cetera, et cetera. So now I'm going to use a lighter color brown up here. I'm going to just start with the yellow. And then, of course, since I've got my yellow colored pencil on, I'm just going to color in the eye and the foot while I have it available to me. I'm going. If I wanted to add those feathers to the ribbon, I would just kind of do some lines like this to make it look more. Totally optional, though. The nice thing about field sketching normally is that as long as you've got the basic color and unique features, you can kind of identify what it is. And 
now that you kind of know how to draw a hawk, you can use this for all birds of prey because they all kind of have the small little pea head, if you will, and long bodies. What kind of, what, what got me interested in this? That's a really good question. So when I was little, when I was in second grade, I really wanted to be an artist. And as I grew up, I kind of forgot about it. And I ended up teaching German at a university for a long time. And then I got frustrated and I remembered that I really enjoyed doing art. So I did it to relax. And then I decided that I wanted to make it my full-time career. So I never went to art school. I just practiced a lot. And then I did a program at the University of Washington in natural science illustration. So it helped me kind of get better at drawing animals more with more scientific accuracy. So really, it was my love of animals and my love of art that brought me to this career. And I didn't, I didn't go to school for it, really, except for the certificate program. So really, it's just a passion that I, a, a hobby that I turned into my job. Fortunately, I've had good luck. <laughs> I encourage all the all the you interested in art just to continue on continue practicing and doing because ultimately that's how I ended up getting better at art. It wasn't because I went to school for it. actually found oh yeah let's let's see some more i'm gonna remove my spotlight here for a minute and i am gonna highlight some of the rest of you all right i'm highlighting you now i'm here Ooh, look at that red tail i like it look at him he's he's got his angry eyebrow too excellent work <laughs> How do you feel about it? You feel happy about it? Yes. Good. I'm glad. You did an excellent job. Anyone else want to show theirs yet? Oh, we got another one. I am Grace. Let's see. Hey, look at yours. I love them. So hockey. Laser eyes. Eli added laser. <laughs> nice work. I like it, everybody. These are incredible. And then Alice, let's see. Excellent. You got the eye down perfect. Look at that. And the stump is excellent work. Thank you for sharing, Alice. Oh, and Katie, let's spotlight that one. Ooh, I like that you added the, the reeds in the background too. That's cool. Nice, thank you. Oh, look at that guy. Hello. <laughs> Those are excellent. Excellent. Thank you for sharing the two of you. You all are very impressive. Oh, I see another one waiting to be shared. Look at you, my little buddy. Oh, very hawk-like. I'm, I'm really excited to see what you all came up with. This is, this is good stuff. Let's see, we got some great, we got Ben here. Let's see yours again, if you wouldn't mind. I love it. I love the details that you did in the, in the wing too. Excellent work. All right. And then Grace, I saw that you wanted to. Look at yours. I love the branch that you did too. He's ready to pounce on a mouse for sure. 
Excellent. How, how is drawing my job? That is a great question. How do I live? Well, I teach a lot of art classes um, to people who are interested, mostly kids your age, which I think is a lot of fun. Um, and I do a lot of work for other people. So I do a lot of pet portraits and I paint a lot of animal portraits that people get interested in. And I sell a lot of my work to biologists. So that's fun. It's pretty, yeah, it's, you can find a way to uh, make drawing your job for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we got about five minutes left. Did y'all have any questions regarding anything? Happy to answer more cartoon movie that would be cool yeah drawing drawing cartoons would be very interesting i have tried drawing people and i don't draw people very well it's a pigeon on steroids <laughs> y'all need to be nice to yourselves these are excellent, excellent drawing of people. what's that here's a drawing yeah, of people. you do you, you do draw people i am black widow Scarlet Witch and Falcon. Excellent. I'm glad to see you. Although oh, not the animal Falcon. That's really good. Look at I love the background you did in that one. Oh, it's wonderful. Y'all, you've impressed me beyond no end today. Yes, of course. Everyone can can show theirs. I I'm so happy that people want to share theirs. A lot of times people get nervous about it. Oh, look, I like it a lot. I love it. Well done. This is, I, I am very impressed. Not that I thought I would not be impressed, but the fact that, do you want to show yours again, Henry? Does it have a piece of pizza in its claw? <laughs> That's funny. Very creative. <laughs> I like it. It's your art. You can do what you want with it. But that is just a basic way on how to draw a red tail hawk. So I hope you had fun with that today. <laughs> you guys all did so excellent. I loved looking at all of the drawings from everybody today. Um, I will say too, before we go, Oh, yay, yes, look at Carver. Um, yes, we all had a great time and thank you again. For those that are joining, um, the next kit, it is another nature kit. Um, and the signups are should be live either today or tomorrow um, to sign up to get the kit. And again, the first 50 people who sign up can get the kit. Um, and the pickup, it starts next Monday, the 28th. I'm at the library, but sign up begins now. So make sure you get signed up and you do have to, um, it's only one sign up per line. So if there's two of you, make sure you go in and sign in twice. <laughs> I'm, I say, and yes, Henry, you made everyone hungry for pizza today. <laughs> um, oh, and thank you. Amanda put in her website right there. So if you go to www.amandajorgensen.com, um, you can find all of her artwork there. That is excellent. I learned so much today and I really, I mean, I got it going. It's better than a stick figure. This is literally the first thing that I've ever drawn and I'm so excited. And then watching all of you really talented library kids um, and your drawings, wow. Just think if I maybe would have started when I was your age. Um, it might not look like this, but also Amanda told us that uh, we keep on practicing and being nice to ourselves. We can do a lot of great work. So that's what we're going to practice. We're going to practice our art. We are going to practice being nice about our art and others art and just keep on going. So can everyone 
give a big round of applause to Amanda and a big thank you. you. <laughs> thank you all for joining me today. It was a lot of fun and all my greetings out to you in Iowa. <laughs> yes. Have fun out in Washington. This will be up on the website. So if you want to go back in guys and kind of look at um, the drawings, it should be up for about a week and you can just check it out that way. So Again, thank you all, and we will see you next time at our next event. Thanks, Amanda. Bye. Thank you.